Hey everyone, it's Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. I'm so excited to bring you this video because I've been shooting video with Nikon cameras since the D7000 and I was fortunate enough to be invited by Nikon Canada to see the unveiling of their new Z series of mirrorless cameras in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is such a big deal for Nikon because it is their first foray into full frame mirrorless cameras. This video will take you through some of my first impressions of the Z series, answer a lot of questions about these cameras for you, and lay out their video shooting capabilities. Let's break down the specs quickly. The bodies of each camera are identical. Right off the bat, you can deduce that one is going to be better in low light, and that would be the Z6. Having said that, when shooting photos, because of the file size of the Z7, you can get possibly as clean an image out of that camera as the Z6 if you're willing to do the post-production work because the file size is just that much bigger and you have more information to work with. All the dials, the LCD on the top that's lit, everything about the camera, including the back screen, is really high quality. There's nothing cheap on this camera. The grip is a bit different than your normal Nikon camera. It is extremely deep and a little bit thinner. The body itself is smaller than a Panasonic GH5, so that gives you a good reference for how small these cameras are. Like other Nikon cameras, there's customizable buttons all over the body. You have built-in image stabilization in the body. And the eye menu, which is the quick menu for Nikon, is also completely customizable. So you can decide to switch between the DX, which is the crop version, like a crop sensor DSLR, and the FX, which is a feature I love. It gives you just a bit of extra reach. The bigger sensor size and the lens mount mean that the camera is able to collect more light. And it means that Nikon can build lenses like their upcoming 55 millimeter 0.95 f-stop lens that are even better in low light. Their adapter, the Z to F adapter, has all the autofocus capabilities and everything else you would expect so that you can still use all F-mount lenses, including non-CPU vintage Nikon lenses, which is one of my favorite reasons to shoot with Nikon cameras over other camera companies. The new Nikon S-series line of lenses have a lot of features that are perfect for video shooters. When using autofocus, the lenses are gonna be silent, they have a really nice wide area for manually focusing. Nikon has worked really hard to reduce the breathing in the lenses so that you have a really appealing focus pull. The cameras can shoot 4K up to 30 frames per second, so no 60 for slow motions. For shooting video, the Z6 is going to be the camera to beat the Sony's and any other mirrorless camera out there as far as low light capabilities. The nice thing about the Z6 versus the Z7 for video shooters is that the Z6 is using a pixel to pixel readout of the sensor, meaning there's no pixel binning or magic to get to that 4K video. Whereas with the Z7, there is some magic involved because of course the sensor is much larger than a 4K sensor. You really, really get a lot of tools to help you get the best image out of this camera. And that means, for one, great focus peaking. Not only do you get, you know, your standard focus peaking, but you get it in multiple flavors. You can choose the color you like, and you can choose the strength. You have an electronic viewfinder. It's completely real to life, and it blows away other mirrorless cameras' viewfinders, in my opinion. A huge big difference between the Z series and previous Nikon cameras is autofocus. Autofocus when shooting video. I could not believe how quick and responsive and accurate the autofocus was on these cameras. I simply selected the point and the camera quickly jumped to focus on the subject as it moved around and I didn't hear any noise from the lens while it was doing it.
Nikon has for a long time provided the ability to shoot time lapse within the cameras. And what's really nice about the Z series is it has the opportunity to shoot regular time lapse, raw files, or to create a movie in camera. And when you create the movie in camera, the movie is 4K. So this is really, really nice. If you're not going to do a lot of post and you just want the camera to create a 4K video, you can do that. The difference between the Z6 and the Z7 is the Z7 also shoots 8K time lapse because the sensor size is bigger. So if you're willing to do post processing on 8K raw files, you better have a good system to do it, but you can shoot 8K. The other nice thing with Nikon cameras is they have aperture smoothing, which is a really nice feature to turn on when shooting time lapse. I think in time people will come to terms with the fact that this camera only has one XQD card slot. I think Nikon probably made a good decision not going with SD because XQD is the same size physically as CF Express, and CF Express is the memory card of the future. The other concern people have had is battery life. In talking to the Nikon rep, he said when shooting 4K directly into the camera, he gets about an hour of 4K filming, which isn't that far off from a Panasonic GH5 that gets like an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes maybe, or even a cinema camera that gets about an hour or an hour and a half of footage per V-mount battery. If you're shooting tethered or if you're taking photographs, obviously the battery would last way longer than that. For people who love long battery life cameras and have gotten used to it, maybe this isn't the camera for them. So if you're fully into shooting photos and you want a more medium format style camera, the Z7 is probably the way to go. If you are a video shooter, you're looking for something that is going to slay the other mirrorless cameras out there as far as full frame, low light, high dynamic range, 10 bit 422 output, and a plethora of other features. The Z6 is really gonna be the camera that is gonna tick all those boxes. I'm so stoked to buy one. All right, so that is my wrap up, my first hands-on impressions of these cameras. Thanks for hanging out with me. Talk to you soon.